Okay, hi everyone. Today I'll be talking on the topic of building a rejection Gillespie algorithm for non-Markovian processes. It is a result of my master thesis project under the supervision of Professor Nico Berenbinkel, Dr. Maria Rodriguez Martinez, and Aurelien Pellissier. It is also a joint collaboration between ETH Zurich and IBM Research Zurich. The structure of my presentation is as follows. We'll first go into the motivation and the background for direct Gillespie and non-Markovian rejection Gillespie. We'll then go into the first set of results uh, where we evaluate the algorithm on, ex on an experimental data set. In the second set of results, we'll look at this runtime speed up, and finally, we'll close up with a discussion. The direct Gillespie algorithm is used for exact simulations of stochastic systems, for example, chemical reactions or cell processes. It is computationally efficient, so it can be very powerful for simulating large stochastic systems. However, it follows an important assumption um, where all the processes involved have to be memoryless processes, i.e. Markovian processes. And hence, we expect all the reactions to follow an exponential waiting time distribution. On the other hand, many real-world processes are actually non-Markovian, for example, cell apoptosis, cell differentiation, disease spreading dynamics, earthquake occurrences, and in general, human activities are hopefully non-random. And it's been empirically shown that non-Markovian processes dramatically alter the outcome of a simulation. So ideally, we want to go from an exponential distribution shown on the left here to something uh, non-exponential on the right. The aims of the project uh, is in a three part. We want to allow reactants to remember their history, whereby we track the time since the firing of each reactant. And then we use this time to allow for a time dependent reaction rate. And using uh, this uh, rate formula, we can then alter the waiting time distributions of the reactants and specifically, we recover uh, a viable distribution. At the same time, we still wish to remain computationally efficient for large simulation sizes and leverage the utility that, of a direct Gillespie. We've chosen the viable distribution because it's a vert versatile distribution whereby we can use it to interpolate between a range of distributions that are relevant in biology. For example, the normal, the log normal, and the long tail distributions. And you can see in the figure here, by setting the alpha parameter to zero, we actually recover the exponential distribution. A quick refresher on the direct Gillespie is shown here. Um, we're using the Gillespie here to model a simple linear differenti differentiation system. I'll, give, I'll go into detail later, uh, but now we just need to know that we go linearly from ESC cell to EPI to NPC cell. So we have two reaction channels, reaction channel one and two. What the direct Gillespie does is it computes the total propensity of the whole system by summing up the propensities of each channel. So it's just the number of reactants in the given channel I times the reaction rate of that channel I. Using this total propensity, we compute the small time increment delta t in which we expect the next reaction to take place. And then we select a firing of, of a reaction i with a prob probability pi. And this probability is proportional to the propensity of that reaction channel. And then we update the list of the reactants uh, according to a given stoichiometry of the reaction channel. So let's say we've picked that. The next reaction, the small time delta t, is going to be reaction number channel number two. So we're going from EPI to NPC. What we'll do then is remove an EPI cell from the system and add an NPC cell to the system. Now for the non-Markovian rejection Gillespie, we are basically extending the direct Gillespie using two components. First component is the non-Markov property and then the rejection step. Both of these have been separately um, developed by 
two papers. So we are building on the work of two different papers, namely Boguna and colleagues first extended the direct Gillespie for, to allow for non-Markov properties, but still at a high computational cost. And then independently, Tan and colleagues introduce a rejection Gillespie that improves the computational efficiency of a direct Gillespie even more. And here we've combined both approaches to, to have non-Markov properties, but still at a high computational um, efficiency. So again, we have the same linear system, but now we are actually, for each reactant, we are tracking its individual reaction rate. So if we have 100 ESC cells, we will have each cell with its own reaction rate, and hence we'll have 100 separate reaction channels. And you can see this can become computationally infeasible if we start with many, many cells. So what we do in the rejection, uh, we, so now we have, we've introduced the non markov properties. And then to, to maintain the computational efficiency, we, in, we introduce the rejection step, which basically sets an upper bound for each reaction channel. So here I'm showing our max, our one max and our two max. So that's the upper bounds. And using this upper bound, we, we reject most of the reactions that are lower than this bound and accept a small proportion of the reactions. By doing so, we reduce the number of unnecessary stoichiometry updates of the system, and it really works in practice uh, to speed up. So both authors uh, or both papers have proved that the approaches follow still the, the, the assumptions stipulated by the direct Gillespie. And what we've done in the thesis work, we uh, have also shown mathematically that both of these approaches combined are still uh, congruent with the, the requirements stipulated by direct Gillespie. And I'll show that um, the, the links to the proofs later. So now we have a, a working framework and we want to see if, uh, if the approach actually works uh, using a ground truth experimental data set. We found a, a suitable data set um, generated by Patrick Stumpf and colleagues who very kindly provided us with the data. It consists of a mouse embryonic stem cell data, which are known to follow a non-Markovian dynamic. In the figure on the right, you see it's a time series data that follows a transition between three different cell types, the linear system I've been showing you before. So we go from embryonic stem cells to epiblast to neuronal pluripotent stem cell. And at uh, each different time points, we, we look at the, the populations of those samples. So here I'm showing the uh, direct Gillespie approach first. So we were fitting the direct Gillespie to uh, the experimental data, and we have a very poor fit for every single cell type. You can see that we've recovered the exponential weighted time distribution at the bottom here. Now, using the non Markovian approach, we have in, an improved set, uh, improved fit to the data, as, as, as uh, shown also by a lower uh, root mean square error. And we have now recovered uh, a non-exponential waiting time distribution. So that all um, worked out very well. And now we want to see if our algorithm is still fast. So for runtime speed up, we are comparing the non-Markovian rejection Gillespie, so the approach we developed. Um, against the um, Gillespie algorithm, non microvian Gillespie algorithm without the rejection step. So this is basically the, uh, how powerful the rejection step can be. So on the figure here, um, in blue is the approach without the rejection and in orange is the approach, full approach with rejection. And you can see that the, uh, Rejection approach um, scales uh, way better with increasing, increasing population sizes. And 
So this is a single simulation run with a population size of about a 400. For um, the rejection Gillespie, it takes only about 0.3 seconds, whereas for the other method, it takes an uh, order of magnitude longer. And hence, we can actually, with our approach, really scale this simulation size of 400 reactants to, to 18,000 simulations per hour, for example. Or, you know, conversely, you can have a huge starting population size and you can really run many simulation cycles still and run it within a, a reasonable time. And finally, um, we're at the discussion point. So we've shown that uh, our developed framework uh, works well and it performs better than the direct Gillespie. We validated it against a simple um, example data set, and we've also shown that it's still computationally efficient. So the further step would be to apply our approach to a more complex system. For example, we could, um, or we're hoping to leverage the expertise we have at IBM for germinal central modeling. Furthermore, we can also um, model evolutionary dynamics um, using the computational oncology expertise at the ETH lab um, at which I was working at. And finally, um, I'd be very interested in finding available time series data that are more complex, or more complex data set with more complex dynamics um, that are non-Markovian. So I'd be very happy if anyone has suggestions uh, as to uh, any data sets that are available out there. And then it'd be very useful to adapt the, the model for a different target distribution, for example, the Gaussian distribution. Here, I'm giving you a link to my repository uh, under which you'll find the code to reproduce all the figures I've shown in this presentation and also um, a PDF file of my master thesis with all the proofs and all the write-ups. With that, I thank you very much for your attention and I'm very happy to take questions online. <laughs>